Hey guys, Mike Chen just got to Florida. Went for a run down this dirt road with ponds and cows staring at you. That's so beautiful here. Anyway, just preparing my stomach because I'm heading down to Miami for what might just be one of the best brunch buffets ever. It's an all-you-can-eat cowboy steak plus seafood plus a bunch of other stuff. Sunday Brunch Buffet. I've been wanting to go to this buffet for years. They had to close it down for a while. Now it's reopened. It's the first weekend is reopened. I can't wait. Also, the video you're about to see was one of my favorite food days in Tokyo, Japan. I got an exclusive look inside the famous Tsukiji Market on a guided tour. And before getting to that, a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Athletic Greens. I've been talking about and taking Athletic Greens for some time now. It's still something I do every single morning after either a brief workout or a run. It's so simple. One scoop or one travel pack. Eight to 12 ounces of water. Shake it up. And drink. That's it. I'm set for the day. Before this, I think I showed you guys, I used to carry around over half a dozen bottles of vitamins, keeping track of vitamins, figuring out which bottle to order, trying to remember how many tablets to take from each bottle, lugging it around. So cumbersome, also super expensive. With AG1, one scoop or one travel pack, I get 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, which I desperately need, whole foods sourced superfoods. It's just a really convenient way to stay healthy. And with every box, you get a pouch that you can put into this can, travel bottle, one year supply of vitamin D, travel pack, and AG1 always goes beyond third-party testing to make sure whatever they're giving you, you're getting the highest quality and the best nutritional daily habits on the planet. Like I said, vitamins are expensive. Sometimes a bottle I would get costs like $30, $40 a bottle. With this, instead of all that, I save a lot of money as well. So if you want to give the try, go to my link down below. You'll get a year's supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your order. Since taking this, I have more energy. Sometimes when I'm working out later at night, I'll take one before the workout to give myself an extra boost. My parents now use it every single day. This really is a game changer when it comes to your immune system because AG1 really does provide your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. Anyway, can't wait to show you guys the Miami Buffet video and uh, enjoy this video. Hey guys, Mike Chang here in Tokyo, and oh, that smells so good. I just passed by this boiling pot of some sort of stew or curry, and I just want to eat it. Anyway, today I am at one of the most iconic markets in all of Japan, Tsukiji. And instead of just wandering around aimlessly like I did last time, I'm gonna have a guide this time. What's up, guys? Hey, what's good up? Good to Mike? see you. What's good to see you. you. How are you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you again, man my friend Yapi. Yapi, good to meet you my friend. Nice to meet you. So last time I was in Japan, I met up with Grav and we did a A5 Wagyu brisket together. That was epic. That was melting your mouth, ginormous mountain of meat. And this time, so you guys started a tour company, yeah. a food tour company, right? Yeah. So we recently launched a new food tour in uh, Skiji Market. It's soon to be released. We're partnering with a company called Arigato Japan. Yeah. And this is where my friend Yappy is. This from. is where Yappy's come from. I see the Tsukiji shirt. <laughs> he's, the, he's the master of Skiji Market. So I know maybe you guys have traveled here before, but I'm telling you, we'll show you spots you've never even heard of and you will realize like how freaking big this place is it is insane like yeah. i remember last time i explored for about a day i feel like i even just now i'm walking here i see the pot of stewed whatever the heck yeah, that is I, I don't know what that is it smells good so first stop is torrid coffee i love how yapi is phrasing this tour for me i see how many stops we're making you said uh i say uncountable uncountable <laughs> Because, That's a great answer. Because we're gonna stop at a lot of different shops, yeah. mainly uh, fish shops, but sometimes vegetable shops, to collect the food items to create your perfect lunch. That's amazing. So on the tour, we start off with uh, just some coffee and then talk about our dietary restrictions. Oh, it's really good coffee.
every time I come back here, I wear I wear this T-shirt to show that I'm on your side. We need to have the relationship together with those people working in the market. Oh, that is the biggest nap of cabbage. Uh huh. Chestnuts. Oh, this is our first stop. Yeah. So those tuna meats is in very fresh. They serve tuna steak. So you're saying they'll sear it for you, or you can get a fresh sashimi stock. Yeah. Some black pepper, lemon. Okay, what do you suggest? Uh, I always put all of those. All of those? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This smells just majestic. It's seared perfectly on the outside. Like I said, deep fried and seared at the same time. Never seen anything like it. Splashed a little lemon juice, a little chili on here. There's one of the most ridiculous things. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Can you taste the garlic? And the garlic, the, the fat. Yeah. There's a little gelatinous -y bits on here as well. Splash of lemon juice is perfect. Yeah, cut down on the fat. I can't even tell that's tuna. Like, I would think that's like a pork steak or something. It's absolutely delicious. Cooked up perfectly. It's tender, it's everything you want as a representative first bite here at Tsukichi. <laughs> A lot of our guests ask, hey, do you do you guys eat every morning? Yeah. But actually we don't. Yeah. So we introduce what we eat for the breakfast, like these two are the typical ones. Yeah, so macro cool. traditional. So this is a typical breakfast. Macro, is this any particular flavor we got? It's a soy sauce flavor. So it's half a fish, fish miso soup, yeah. rice. It's a 800 yen, 800 which yen. is in between five or six dollars. That's pretty good for Japan. And I mean, we're at the fish market, so yeah. this is super fresh. This is not some like frozen. So sesame seeds on top, you can tell it's seared on top. Look at the juice coming from this as soon as I'm kind of tapping it. And inside, oh my gosh, look at that. Beautifully flaky, the color is beautiful. And you can smell the smokiness of the fish as soon as they brought it over. And mackerel is one of my favorite things because I feel like it's got such a great umami. All right, bro, have some. Thank you. Careful of the bones. Yeah, you do have to be careful of the bones. Yeah. Mm. Mm, that's so good. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Seriously? I love macro. I've had macro in a lot of places. In Japan? No, like all just around the world, like, mm -hmm. you know, traveling in Korea. But this is the freshest I've ever had it. Yeah. This is the best I've ever had it. The flavor is incredible. The umami burst on this thing is just insanity. And the outside's like so crispy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they whipped out that porch again or mm -hmm. what. That little bitterness from the char. Mm -hmm. Couple with that subtle sweetness. This is a must try. This is so freaking good. They're cooking a lot of different types of fishes and they're not gonna waste it. Yeah. Even the bones and tails and things like that. Yeah. They use it as a soup stock for that miso soup. Not like this powdered is... one. Oh, or yeah. Something like this that. is great. This definitely doesn't taste like a typical miso soup. Like a lot of nice fish flavor in here. Mm. So uh -huh. this is breakfast number two. Yeah, <laughs> right. I love this Hobbit meal plan that we're on right now. You know, you shouldn't go shopping hungry, right? Yeah. That's why we we get ourselves prepared and heading off to shopping. We're hopping around a lot of different shops. I was walking by, and there's just like these stalls of just just random standing ramen stalls. And this one looks like udon with uh, mintaiko. Oh yeah. This these ones are pasta. This one's a ramen. And you just stand here. You order your ramen. And you just take a take a stand and just eat your ramen. Now we're gonna start searching here for items for our perfect lunch after okay. we've had a little bit, so we don't over shop. And these ones are tuna, and they also have someone here. This one's a minced meat of tuna, negi toro. And you can see the prices vary because they're different. Uh, different of the tuna. Well, so you buy it from here, then they cook it for you? They're gonna. Cut it for us. This is all available raw. Mm -hmm. 
you order what you want, they slice it up for you and just enjoy. Yeah. That sounds good. And I be, I'm gonna show what's in the market. Okay. Oh, these are some giant scallops and oysters. Wow. They're gonna cook it here. And they'll just cook it here for yep. you. And mm -hmm. you can enjoy it. And just eat it right there? Yes. This is amazing. But also like fruits and vegetable ones. They can make cold pressed juice here. Uh huh. So you just choose your fruits and they'll just cold press the juice for you. Very fresh squid. Calamari right there. Yeah. You pick your seafood and they grill it for you right there. And they, they cook special Uh huh. And stewed, um, stewed radish. There's giant lobster sized prawns. When they're grilling it, the smell from the shells and that great prawn flavor just, just fills this whole block. Maguro. Maguro no miyako. Maguro no miyako. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Open from five to three, but they suggest not uh, professionals coming after nine after nine so in between so in between five to nine uh -huh. for the professionals uh -huh. like chefs or yeah five to nine a.m dealers yes yes, yes. Yeah. okay So we're getting an inside look. This is the B2B market. So this is usually the markets for restaurant owners and other people in the food industry. This place is specific for tuna, tuna tails. Mm -hmm. This is where a lot of the seafood restaurants, fish restaurant people come and source their fish yes. is here. So you get samples here. So this is a tuna tail. Mm. That's super crunchy on the outside. Also tell me, Got that nice gelatinous texture in conjunction with the lean flesh of the tuna. And this is otoro katsu? Yeah, otoro. I've never seen that before. That's definitely not common. Sandwich form. More fiber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good. So sweet. Wow, I know. That's so there. sweet. This is like a fruit. It does. Tomato is a wow. fruit. It is a fruit. That's really cool getting an inside look um, into the fish market. There's so much fresh seafood, a lot of it. The prices are amazing. It's the hardest food substance in the world. This is like dried bonito fish. Oh, wow. It, like it does. I've never seen it like solid before. So, of course, uh, bonito flakes, a lot of people are familiar with, that's goes on top of a lot of dishes. Wow. <laughs> this feels like a block of wood. Yeah. Yeah. This is the hardest food substance in the world. According to Guinness Book of yeah, Records. Okay. How to make bonito flake, they boil it, uh -huh. smoke it, uh -huh. then polish it more than dry. Wow. So wow. some of those Five takes steps. half a year to make half one. Half a of year those. to make one yeah. of this. Yeah. In between three months or six months. Yeah. And Five step process. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's why the flavor is so strong mm -hmm. and delicious.
Yappy is like literally cooking us a personalized sashimi meal here. Fresh scallops meal here. Fresh wasabi, the only way to do it. Otoro. Otoro. Yeah, that's the fattiest part. Yeah. Most flavorful. And of course, the bonito. This is, uh, Yappy is shaving this. Do you just carry this around with you? <laughs> yes. Yes, you really? <laughs> That's a fresh lot. Fresh wasabi. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. wow. It's so good. This is the only fresh wasabi you can do is like do it like that. If you take yeah, that yeah, neon yeah. green stuff. Oh man, your nose will be on fire. That is gonna light you up. <laughs> that is so delicious. These are not that spicy compared it's to not. Like the fake wasabi. It's delicious. So we looked at that. That was about the cheapest $10. one. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Or less than that. Because this, you know, fresh wasabi grows only in where the water is super clean. Just right down from the Mount Fuji, the water is uh, super pure, clean. Yeah. And you said you've never seen it in the U.S. before? Like, i never seen it. I never. I mean, I'm sure they exist in the U.S., I just never seen it. Mm. you never seen it in Tokyo as well. Yeah, fresh wasabi? You don't see yeah. it often, yeah. Really? How would you even eat this without a grater? It's just, you can break your teeth. This literally looks like something you stab Dracula with. Yeah, it doesn't right? look like a food item. Yeah, <laughs> stab Dracula. Dracula. It doesn't look like a food right. item. It's crazy. Spray. You are the best tour guide slash chef. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. People are gonna have a treat. Old Toro was that sweet shrimp. Yeah. Eel, scallops, Jesus, bonito flakes on top. Everything freshly made by Chef Yappy here. Mmm. Mm. That's so good. I love eel. That's so sweet and smoky. Yeah, it's eel sauce. Chase it with a little wasabi. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like it. And that amazingly fatty flavor that comes out of it as you chew. Yeah, they cook it over charcoal, mm -hmm. you know, and it gives it that smoky flavor. Sweet shrimp? Yeah. I love the wasabi. Fresh. I love the wasabi is fresh wasabi. Game changer. Mm. Mm. That's so sweet. Let's save the toro for last, because yeah. last fatty bite. It's gonna be the best. Sweet scallops. There's nothing like this, you know, anywhere in the world where you could just come to a fish market. All fresh ingredients. You got wasabi, that's fresh. But needle flakes, that's shaped fresh. Where do you fresh. find know, this right? stuff? It's incredible. You just go upstairs and sit at a table and enjoy it. I mean, this is where sushi restaurants mm -hmm. source their ingredients. Exactly. That is a flounder fin. Flounder fin. He said it was interesting. It's not like a typical thing yeah. you can find. Flounder fin with bonito shavings on top. It's good. I like that oh, flounder. Wow. It's really good. Unique texture, yeah, right? Kinda yeah, kind of like cart. A little cartilage. snappy. Yeah. I don't know if that's so weird. That's but, really uh, nice. And there's no fishiness to it. No, yeah, that's the weird part. Oh, I just got hit by that, but bonito flake. So smoky, the bonito flake. I'm not a huge fan of bonito, but this really? fresh one oh, is. I love I'm not that. a huge fan uh, of the dried ones, mm -hmm. but this fresh one tastes actually quite good. Yeah. I <laughs> love I love everything with bonito. So How so about the wasabi? Wasabi, wasabi is amazing. so good. Yeah. We've been like, eating so much wasabi. I'm just Amazing. putting bonito flakes everywhere. Old Toro. Can you see something on the surface? Oh, the oil from the fish just yeah. just wow, left itself it out, yeah. on the surface of the soy sauce. Yeah, that old Toro that's, is delicious. That's how funny that is. Mm. I, I just wanted to show you that. It's, it's, <laughs> It's my favorite thing. It's just like the Wagyu of the sea. It's just so mm. buttery and melty. Mm. That texture, that flavor, it's life-changing stuff. You never had it before. Yeah. That's the actual size of a tuna. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it could eat us. 230 kg. That is crazy. That's a 400 pound fish. You can choose how many shots you're gonna put oh. in. Like a, like a
fresh matcha iced tea. That's so good. That's really strong. Strong. Mm, I love it. I love yeah. the bitterness. That subtle sweetness. Yeah. yeah. What did you get? You got the latte? Latte. Wow. Oh, that looks good. It like came with a mochi? Mochi. Mochi. Oh, right. This is perfect. Mm. Mm. I like how it's cold. Sweet mochi with a sip of very concentrated matcha ice tea. And it's a perfect way to end this food tour. So we're gonna go look at some more um, places. That's all the food we're gonna eat for now. Um, but you guys are starting the tour. Yeah, we're gonna launch it around next month. Mm -hmm. So um, stay tuned for some details. We'll post it on okay. the website and everything. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining. No, Hope thanks for, no, it's awesome. Thanks for having me. I'll put all the information for the tour down below for you guys. So I didn't know a lot about this market because like, I explored this by myself last time I was here. But I learned so much from, from you, Appy. Thank you so much. Thank you. And especially that awesome sushi meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sushi thank meal. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's go look at some knives. Do you recommend this knife shop? Because they're doing that from the samurai era. Mm -hmm. And they're making the samurai swords in the early time of their history. You can take a look at that with oh, the drawing. Wow. Uh -huh. That samurai is holding the knife just like this. Are the tuna knives derived from swords? Because they look I mean, like yeah. swords. Yeah. It's coming from the same te technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have already seen how big mm -hmm. the tuna is, right? Yes. So they need such a giant knife. These knives are so beautiful. And, you know, as you can see, these are the Western style with the, you know, plastic mm -hmm. handle. And this one is wooden one with the Japanese style. This one is much better. Thank you so much, Yappy. Amazing meeting you. Take care, my friend. Thank you. Bye bye. So that includes the official tour of the Tsukiji market. I'm going back to that big boiling pot of meat. lunchtime line around the block. So there's a couple dishes that are really popular here. The second most popular is the gyodo. So thin slices of marinated beef. I dropped an egg on top of that as well. Beautiful golden egg. The beef the slices are so thin. It looks really fatty and tender. The juice, of course, covers every single grain of rice. Give this a nice mix. This smells so beefy. I'm really actually more excited for what's coming up. This looks like a bowl of beef and beef intestines. This is what's smelling so good in that boiling pot. Last time I saw a boiling pot like that, it was in Thailand and that thing has been cooking for over 40 years, so. The beef, just about as tender as they come. The fat kind of melted with the rice. And with that silky velvety egg, just creates this awesome, luxurious texture. Mm. I definitely recommend putting some chilies on this just to balance out the richness of all. Mm. I'm gonna jump into this beef bowl really quick. There's scallions on top and the sauce looks way more rich and soy saucy. Mm. There's also konjac in here as well. This is so lovely. The flavor is definitely richer and deeper. It's beefier, it's soy saucier, so it's got more of a umami bite to it. I'm in love with this bowl. I mean, the gyodong's good. I love that. This is some must-get stuff. You could tell the meat has been simmering in that broth for so, so long. You're definitely getting some organ meats. This is a little intestine. Which is so fatty and nice. Again, steeped in that delicious, delicious dark sauce. When you're watching this, it's just as saucy and flavorful as you would imagine. Very beefy, a bit of that nice organy flavor, some snappiness from the konjac, crunchiness from the scallion. Again, add a little chilies in here. I will highly, highly recommend trying this. Maybe after you eat some fish, eat something light, come for something that's just saturated with flavor and sauce. I saw people waiting here since eight o'clock in the morning. Now I see why. This is the other place I was eyeing right next to the stew beef place. So they serve rice bowls or pasta. And I got spicy mentaiko pasta. Mm. I love this. A little cup of broth. Mm. The broth is delicious. Pasta, 
cold, chewy, and al dente, covered in mint thai kou and chilies. It's spicy, it's briny. Mint thai kou gives off such a deliciously umami filled flavor. This is just incredibly satisfying for about six bucks. I would highly, highly, highly recommend coming here. Really, not much of a line. Extremely efficient. I got my food in a few minutes. There's still some more stuff I wanted to try inside the market. I think we'll save that for another day, but just had to get a few more things before ending my time here. What an amazing day. Got some great insight from the market and really the perfect ending. One more seafood meal before I leave. This restaurant serves mainly uni, and they have this dish with five different types of uni, all from the Hokkaido region. Also, got a sashimi bowl. Mm. That just tastes like seafood ice cream. It's so creamy. The uni is just so delicate. Hokkaido uni, it's a little briny and sweet. It's just the softest ever. Mm. Ikura, chopped fatty salmon. Mm. And of course, more Otoro. Had a taste of Otoro earlier. I definitely don't think I had enough. Mm. And all this, it's just as fresh as can be. So this giant piece of scallops, fatty salmon. Everything is just pure, melting your mouth tender. The tuna and salmon is fatty. The scallop is just so sweet. A little snappy seaweed, a little sifu soup. I think it's silly miso soup. Freshly made. Let's mark it. We gotta start with seafood and end with seafood. And this is some of the best seafood you can find anywhere in the world. <laughs>